So now our next step is to uh, focus on the successful presentation to influence investors. Uh, in this part of the webinar, uh, you will get information and knowledge about the proper content for successful presentation to influencing investors. So first we start from the title page. Then we move to the characteristics of our company and social environmental undertaking. Then we need to present our team members from their best side. Then we need to focus on the characteristics of the problem. So here we identify the problem that our pro-social or pro-environmental product service or investment is going to solve and we are trying to specify how many people it can support. The next part is to present the solution. So how the problem that we mentioned above will be solved. Next we focus on customer and investors value proposition and next uh, we can see in the diagram that the value proposition and uh, the customer profile should stick together. If we focus on value proposition, we need to list the products and services that our value proposition is built around. Next, we should describe how products and services create the customer gain. Then we need to check how we should describe products and services in order to elevate the customer pain. Then we will move to the customer segment where we should describe the outcomes that our customers want to achieve if they create benefits from our value proposition. Then we need to describe the bad outcomes, risks and obstacles related to customers' jobs. And of course, we should describe what customers are trying to get done in their work and in their life. Coming back to the next uh, elements of the successful presentation, we should draw attention to the characteristics of the pro-social and pro-environmental product service or investment. Then we need to describe the market size and competition. So we try to show, preferably in numerical form, the size of the market the size of uh, the target group, and of course our planned market share. If we are uh, trying to describe the competition, we need to show how strong the competition is, preferably by indicating the approximate market share, and of course, what are the competing solutions on the market. Next, we should try to choose the best business model. So we should try to answer the question, how we intend to make money from the created product, service or investment that is pro-social or pro-environmental. Then we need to stick to the sales and marketing plan. So we need to describe how we plan to acquire customers what channels do we intend to use in order to reach them? Of course, if we prepare the roadmap that shows our plans for future, it will also be very helpful. Next, we need to describe the amount of investment and its purpose. So we should show what the funds raised will be needed for, what are the planned value sales, and of course, the actual cause. And we need to try to answer the question, when will the return on investment occur? We finish our successful presentation with our correct contact details. So to sum up, here is some specific list of features of an effective presentation to influence investors. So first, the presentation should be, should be coherent and clear. Of course, it should be correctly edited if we add text to the presentation. So to sum up, it should be error-free. 
Of course, we should remember about the proper uniform graphic design and the moderate amount of information. And of course, try to focus on the best adequate speed of slide display. Now we will move to the next section of the webinar, which is storytelling. And we will get to know this tool in order to communicate a business idea to investors in a new way. Here is the definition of storytelling. As we know, storytelling is known as a kind of narrative marketing. It is a business tool to communicate a brand or product that relies on storytelling. It can be considered as one of the strategic tools of market communication, which allows consistent in its essence communicate an idea in such a way that it stands out from other similar products or services. The essence of storytelling. Well, storytelling is a tool that presents and organizes facts in a logical, coherent way and turns gears into order. The interactions between the characters in a story build its appeal in the eyes of the audience. The story itself is the primary means of communicating its perspectives and perceived values to the surroundings. What are the advantages of using storytelling to present a business idea to investors? Well, first of all, the help of storytelling is that we can present our business idea to impact investors by creating an original story about our product, service, or pro-social and environmental initiatives. What's more, storytelling aims to create and strengthen the bond with the investor and engage him on a much deeper level than by influencing without storytelling, because we use emotions in this tool. The effectiveness of storytelling lies in the recipients of the stories told, remembering the content much more quickly than if they were presented with just figures on, or facts. Now we will move to the value building ecosystem. So if we are thinking about the impact investment missions, uh, we should focus on value building ecosystem. So you can see in the diagram here, you can see that the enterprise value consists of three elements, financial productivity, society, and resilience. Then we will move to each of these elements and try to uh, put the right attention uh, to its content. So as for the financial productivity, uh, we need to remember that capital markets have long rewarded companies for invest investments that drive growth while improving productivity to make growth more profitable. As a result, companies have always had to carefully balance expenses and save money with the added caution that investing for growth is the long-term factor in building sustainable assets. Of course, organizations have responded to the capital markets focused on financial performance by measuring and communicating their financial activity very well, focusing on it much more than on the non-financial aspects of their performance and impact. As for the organizational resilience, it is said that a truly resilient organization has got the ability to, ability to anticipate, 
if a four respond and adapt to incremental change and sudden disruptions in order to survive and prosper. As for the society, the organization also creates enterprise value by addressing broad societal challenges and by considering a wider range of stakeholders besides shareholders in making decisions. Such an approach can, for example, prevent the destruction of value that can arise from climate risk or increase value by attracting and retaining more talented, engaged and productive workers through diversity and inclusion programs. In fact, the interest of stakeholders in many cases coincide with those of society thus creating or at least avoiding damaging the value of the enterprise. Now let's move to ethical values in the activities of impact investors. Of course, if we are talking about the ethical values, we need to remember about the responsibility, which means that the company is ready to take responsibility for the impact it has society as well as the environment. Transparency is the next value, which means sharing information about decisions and activities related to those aspects of the company's operation that are related to society and the environment. The next value is ethical behavior when all decisions are made and executed in an honest, reliable, and credible manner. Of course, the next value will be ethical conduct, which is also the personal value and sense of responsibility of the owner of the company, the readiness to treat other people as equals, honesty, and of course, commitment. As for other ethical values, we need to active presence in the environment. So the company doesn't operate in isolation from the environment, engaging in pro-social and pro-environmental projects. As for ethical principles for investing, we should be uh, in the face um, of such information that we shouldn't get involved in investment transactions, that the nature of which is unclear, in particular in terms of sources of potential income. We and other parties to the investment transaction should have access to appropriate sources of information, and this information shouldn't be distorted. Of course, we should be also sure that the undertaken investment will not finance activities that may be harmful or infringe the rights of other entities. And as a part of the investment product process, the capital of some entities is most often dealt with directly or non-directly by other entities. So these entities should also act with integrity. Now let's focus on code of ethics. The essence of code of ethics is that it is a set of descriptions of the situation, methods of conduct, orders, prohibitions, defining the desired behavior in the company and the company's behavior towards the environment. So the code of ethics defines the responsibilities of the management board resulting from the company's obligations towards the society. Here are the advantages of applying the code of ethics by impact investors. First of all, the code of ethics will influence the prestige of the organization. It will also accelerate the decision-making process. It will define and justify the limits of deviations from legal norms. It will also 
result in increasing customer loyalty, improve the image and reputation of the company or venture. It will also have the impact on the development of local communities and the natural environment. And it will also have the impact on cooperation with contractors. Now here we let's focus on investments that are considered ethical in the area of impact investment. So investments that are considered ethical in the area of impact investment can be divided into two groups, pro-social and pro-environmental. First, let's focus on pro-social. So they are the, those investments that are operating in accordance with the principles of corporate social responsibility. So in short, DSR. Implementing a policy of diversity and equal treatment of employees regardless of their gender, race, religion, or level of efficiency. Applying the principles of corporate governance, transparent management in line with the code of ethics, as well as operating for the benefit of the local community. As for the pro-environmental investments that are considered ethical, they are engaged in activities that protect the natural environment using renewable energy, secondary raw materials, applying high ecological standards as well as producing high quality products that are safe for both the customers and the environment. And of course, conducting research for innovative solutions that save energy, reduce the consumption of natural resources and greenhouse gas emissions. Now let's focus on the way of how to design a business model. Okay, so now let's focus on the part of the webinar entitled Designing a Business Model. So first of all, uh, we need to focus on the business model itself. As the word model itself indicates, it's a certain construction, a pattern on the basis of which we will further develop our activities. Uh, by creating an action plan, we have the opportunity to view and organize our plan strategies. We need business models because they help in setting further goals. They are a kind of map of our business leading to success on which we clearly choose and define our own path with the main point marked. In the very process of creating such a model, uh, we obtain a diagram of our company's operation. During its creation, we can look at the most important areas of its functioning from a distance. At this stage, uh, there is also the question of how our company earns and what to do to make the earnings as high as possible. To determine this, we need to carefully observe our actions and catch the most important elements of the function. Remembering that earning money is our main goal as we lead the company. The business model is a concept that we cannot boost of long history. It gained its popularity in the field of management sciences only in the late uh, 1990s. So uh, it's um, for this reason, uh, in this case of the concept of concept of business model, we can talk about a bit of an interpretational uh, chaos because this term has not been uh, given a uniform and coherent definition because um, many outputs dealing with the subject matter select the components of the business model in a variety of ways and classify them differently. The business model 
make it adopted by a company to increase and use its resources to provide customers with an offer of products or services that exceeds the value offered by competitors and at the same time ensures profitability for the company. And then the relationship between customer, business partners, and suppliers and the roles they play were included in the definition of business model. But moreover, they also included the main flows of products, information, and money that take place in the course of business, as well as the benefits that uh, will be achieved on this account by individual market participants. Um, following the six basic functions that the business model should perform in the field of innovation, for example, we should concentrate on articulating a value proposition for the client, for example, a specific value in use, method of solving um, their problems. Moreover, uh, we should focus on identifying a market segment. For example, the users for whom the technology or solution is useful and determine the mechanism for generating revenue from participants in the segment for the company. As well, we should concentrate on uh, defining the structure of the value chain within uh, the company because it must sell its offering and identify the necessary additional assets and resources necessary to support the company's position in the chain. Uh, we should also remember about estimating the cost structure of the potential revenues and profits for the production of the offered product or service and describe the company position in the value creation network that connects suppliers and customers, including potential cooperators and competitors. And of course, we should also formulate a competitive strategy for which the innovation, innovative company will achieve profits and maintain a competitive advantage over their rivals. So um, to sum up, the business model should be rational and coherent. It should also pass um, three tests of a strategic solution. So first of all, um, uh, business model should create value sustainable adventure, advantage as a result of a given business model. A kind of clear value must be created for the recipient. For example, fast, regular, or cheap transport, fashionable or uh, colorful clothing. Uh, what's more, the business model should also be uh, consistent and uh, repeatable because um, it should be um, uh, created like within each of the important variables of the model, uh, the solutions must match each other and systematically reinforce each other's effectiveness. And just as the results and solutions adopted, for example, in uh, such a um, business model, as uh, the um, Benetton business model, Zara, Southwest Airlines, Kinopolis. So um, the last but not least, uh, the business model should be uh, difficult to imitate. So given business model cannot be fully transparent because it will be immediately imitated by the competitors.